Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. Today, I'm showing you how to make a little invention of mine I uh, came up with just a minute ago, actually. Uh, well, about two hours ago, called a lamb jar. Uh, it's a lamb dinner in a jam jar, like a lamb jar, jam jar, you get what I'm saying? Uh, it's just come out of the oven, so I'm not gonna touch it, but it's wicked, and you can put your own twist on it. So uh, here's the intro, and uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Ah, uh, there's a place in your house where it's cool to chill. Get some me time or even cook a meal. It's your kitchen mofo, ain't no time to slack. So just grab yourself a penny and let's work that ass. If you're scared of this place, ain't no need to bother. Just lay down your weapons and pick up another. Right here then folks, so to make a lamb jar, um, you can do any tweaks you want to it. These are the ingredients I'm using, so hit pause now and write them all down. I've got my uh, jam jar here and I had this like metal ring thing around it which helped to keep the lid on, like fasten it like that. I'm taking that all off as it's going in the oven, okay? Uh, make sure that the jam jar you get is oven proof, otherwise it could shatter and destroy your oven for life. Yeah. Um, but you can do any types of combinations you want like this. You know, you can maybe do like a beef jar, or you could do a lasagna type thing, or fajitas with like wraps and stuff inside it. Huh? Just wedge them all in. I don't know. But it's going to be like a little jar full of flavour. I'm being super lazy when it comes to my veg as well. Uh, I've got a massive pan of water there, and all I'm going to do is basically just chuck it all in together and then just work it all individually at the end. So uh, let's get on, make it, and uh, I love you. Right here then guys, so uh, the vegetables are kind of bland for this recipe, quite self-explanatory, like the, uh, the carrots, all I'm gonna do is just peel them and then uh, cut them up, that's pretty much it. When it comes to the swede though, it's kind of intimidating, it's like a big nipple like that, I'm just gonna hack it up into chunks, whack it in there just like a potato, and mash it up individually. So I'm gonna have a potato and a swede mash. Okay guys, um, I've got to be honest, I've got a vicar coming around my house in a bit because we're getting uh, Chloe christened soon. So uh, God bless my soul when it comes to this bit. I'm about to chuck the veg in this pan but the water isn't quite boiled yet. So uh, thank you, Jesus, and all that. Uh, so yeah, what I'm going to do, I've got my Swede cut up into nice funky chunks like that. Get them smaller if you like, if you want to cook it through quicker. I'm going to just plonk them in that pan like that. And uh, you can just chuck it from a distance if you want. Oops. Right here then guys, hopefully you can see the steam there. This water is about to boil. I've got the potatoes down the bottom and the Swede treading water at the top like so. I've got my carrot, Ooh. I did have my carrots there. Uh, I will give them to a rabbit or maybe I'll just eat them myself. They're gonna go in about five minutes after. Let these soften up a little bit first. Carrots aren't gonna need as long, okay? So uh, that's pretty much it at the minute. We'll move on to our lamby bit now. Whoa. Okay my friends, we're gonna move on to the meaty bit of uh, this recipe and I have in my hand, cho chung, some lamb mince. Yeah. Uh, this pan is warming up, um, it's not as hot as it could be, but I'm just going to place the lamb in there as well. We're going to break it down, we're going to chuck in some red wine, some mint, uh, some mushrooms, and a little bit of water and a stock cube. A bit boring on its own like that. Yeah, so all I'm doing first of all is just breaking the mince down and browning it, and then all the other ingredients. Look, there's a little bit of a brown spot there, can you see it? It's cooking fast. Once it's all cooked through like that, we'll add all those flavours in there. Wicked! Okay, my friends, so my mince is browned. It is so browned, cho chung, it's kind of like one of those like big fat men that you see on holiday where they have the gold medallion, massive belly, hairy chest, and they're like, yeah, and they're a bit too much sun. That's brown. Uh, yeah, so here we go. We're gonna add some flavor to this. Got some mushrooms, we've got some mint just chopped up roughly there, some water, around about 200 mils. There's a lot more in there than that. But the rest of the flavor, my friends, is gonna come from a stock cube, cho chung, vegetable stock cube, with a bit of mint on it, and some red wine. So. Uh, It's a nice wine. It's going in. Go in there. Okay, my friends, the ingredients are all in there. I've got the wine in there. You can probably see it stained the mushroom there. The mushroom, the mint, the water, and the stock cube. In fact, let's give it a little bit more wine. I added three and a half tablespoons if you're interested, so I've got a little left to get drunk on. I mean, that's probably too much for me to get drunk on, but you know what I'm saying. Let's bring this up to a simmer, get all those flavors in there, wilt down that mint, and let the mushrooms shrink up. It's wicked. Okay, and just to show you, while we bring this up to a simmer, it's gonna take a while, the potatoes are roaring away, it's time to drop in my carrots, wow, like that. Be careful when you do that, especially if you've got bare foot, like me, and uh, be careful, sorry. Okay then folks, hopefully you can see it, we've got two pans roaring away there, our meat, the smell coming out of there is Fantastic. Uh, the only other thing to add into the pan of the veg is some frozen peas, cha-ching, like that. But if I chuck them in now with the veg, when I want to mash up all the swede and the potato, it's going to be really hard because I have to pick up all the peas individually. So I'll get those out first, then chuck these in for two minutes. Right here then guys, um, the vicar has just been around, so I do apologise, I was nipping in and out of the kitchen. Um, I've done my peas, just blasted them in that water for two minutes, drained off my swede, my carrots, my potatoes, I'm just going to mash them all up. The smell in here 
from that lamb and that wine is wow, like that. It's kind of scary. I was hoping to get the vicar on the camera. I was like, I'm doing a cooking video. Do you fancy doing it? It's like, no, no. What's she? Yeah. Okay, so this is where we are. We have got our potatoes there, cho uh, my peas, my carrots, my peas and my carrots, Jenny. Uh, yeah, uh, the swede, which is there, so it's a slight different colour in the swede and the potatoes, looking good. Uh, tin of sweet corn as well, and there is that mixture there, the lamb, the mushrooms are all shriveled up, the mint is in there, the flavour of the, the chicken stock cube and the wine is all zinging around there. I'm loving it, I want to dance on the pan, I want to go, ooh, you know when you walk on coals and it's like, ah, like that, I want to do that, but in the pan. Okay, so uh, basically in that last scene, as she just told you, I'm just going to grab a potato masher like that, mash my swede, and mash my potatoes. Yeah. Right here then guys, so I finished mashing up my swede and my potato, and I feel like I've kind of been a little bit boring tonight. You know, I like how sometimes I like to just chuck stuff in the mash, you know, mix it up, you know, the herbs can really drive it home. You know, you could add some of the mint in there, that would really be spanktastic. Uh, so we've got the swede, there we are, that's all mashed up, and actually there is a teeny bit of mint in there, I do apologise, so uh, yeah, that wasn't intentional, it must have just fell off my fingers. Uh, so that is a nice bit of yellow, and they've got the white from the potatoes, with the actual skin still on there as well, because that's how I like the potatoes, and if you don't know that already, then uh, you do now. So take the skin off if you want, uh, we're going to build it now, in our jar. Okay, from this bit on, I haven't really thought it through too much, so let's just go with it and see what happens. So I've got myself my jam jar there. That's quite a small one, actually, so uh, let's just see. We're gonna get some meat at the bottom of it. Yeah. Okay, so I've started adding my meat in there, and I don't know if you can see, it is quite a dry mixture. I tried to simmer off as much of that juice and the fluid as I could, so just spoon that in there, push it all around. Obviously put in as much or as little as you like, bearing in mind it will compress down. Okay, next, one of the only uncooked things that's going into the jam jar, I've got some sweet corn straight from the tin, so I'm just gonna sprinkle that in there. Oh no, I'm getting it everywhere, oh my goodness. So just sprinkle that in, give it a good layer, get your fingers in there, push it to the sides and that, get it all down, oh yeah. Okay, so now the same thing uh, with my peas. Uh, yeah, so that's just gonna go on there like that. Again, get it, try and get it right to the edge like that so you've got like a nice funky band of colors. Okay, so that combination is looking good. Brown, yellow, green. I actually mashed my carrots as well, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm gonna do is spoon some of that out there, push it in there. Again, cram it all the way down. Get that nice band of colors in there. Okay, that is looking good. I've got some of the swede here. So we're gonna bring that yellow color back in. I'm gonna spoon that on there. It's gonna work its way around the edge. And then I'm gonna just finish it off with the mashed potato. So uh, yeah, swede in, then the mashed potato. Okay, my friend, so you can just see the swede layer there, then the potato sticking up at the top. What you can do is grab a fork as well, do some funky patterns in it. I'm gonna finish it off with a little bit more zing. So I'm just gonna get some mint and put it on there. I'm gonna give it some ground black pepper, and also a teeny weeny bit of cheese just along the top there like that. And I'm gonna put that in the oven. It's not gonna take long, it's just gonna heat it all up, and uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna eat it. Wicked. All right then, guys, my lamb jar. <laughs> Kind of crazy, huh? Lamb jar for men. Uh, it's about to go in the oven like that. Now this oven is very, very hot. It's preheated to gas mark four. Well, it's not very, very hot. That is hot for a human hand, which I just did. I can't believe I just did that. And uh, yeah, it's going to go in there for just around about 10 minutes. I just want to get it all funky on the top, warm it all through. Let's go. Right here then, guys. It's been 15 minutes and the lamb jar is all done. Um, it's nice and golden brown on the top there, you can see it all nice and firm and crispy, the mint is wilted away there and the smell coming from it. And if you just excuse me one minute, it's very, very warm, so I'll keep my nose well away from it. Oh my goodness, it smells like Pamela Anderson. Okay, so one thing you're probably wondering is why did I leave it so dry, that meat? It's because with all that heat in there going down, we're gonna get juices from the carrot and the potatoes and the sweet and the peas and the sweet corn all heaping down the bottom. And if you had that other juice there, it would have just simmered and bubbled away. But if you wanted a bit like a bit more juicy, you can maybe put a hole in it, pour some gravy in it or some of the excess juice from when we cooked it. But I don't know if you can see, there's another layer down the bottom here of that juice collecting, and that is gonna be full, wow, of flavor, my friends. So I'm gonna have a little taste of this right now. A lamb jar. Right here then guys, I've got a nice big spoonful here. In fact, that is one of the cool things about it. You get to eat it with a spoon. Things always taste better with a spoon. I've dug right down to the bottom. Wow. I was like digging, I was like excavating. It's mad. I'm excavating my dinner, baby. Uh, let's see what it tastes like. Very, very hot. Ooh, yeah. 
Oh my goodness, it just slid down. It's full of flavour. Every single layer, boom, 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 is like working its way down my throat. And there's a mint punch, a mint slap, a mint kick going in there, and I'm loving it. So, if I can make it absolutely anyone in the world can, have a go for yourself. Let me know how you get on. If you like this video, like it, share it, leave a comment and all that stuff, and uh, you know, I'll try and interact with you and stuff, and you know, you can share it amongst your friends. I'll see you again next time. Love you.